In the last episode of The Time Compass, the Aztecs had a powerful army that conquered neighboring peoples. And in just a couple of centuries, they ruled over Mesoamerica. Tenochtitlan was a very special city. It was built on a small island in the center of a great lake. In fact, its population reached 250,000 inhabitants. If you looked closely toward the horizon, you'd be able to see the mountains surrounding the city. The Aztecs revered mountains, with their peaks reaching up to the sky where the gods lived. The Aztecs built around 25 pyramid-shaped temples that imitated the mountains. These temples were designed to instill fear and respect amongst the population. And ceremonies involving human sacrifices were carried out on their stone altars. The Time Compass. Aztec Empire, Part 2. All civilizations express their visions of the world. And remnants of extinct civilizations help us in the modern age find out more about ancient peoples. The Aztecs recorded their history of military conquests and dominance through colorful symbols inscribed onto deer skin or cotton sheets. These records, full of colorful drawings, are historical documents in which many aspects of the Aztecs' daily life were recorded. You see, the Aztecs did not develop an alphabet. So instead of spelling words, a representation of an animal or object had to be made by using a combination of drawings. Here's an example. They wrote the name of their capital, Tenochtitlan, by drawing a stone, which was a tena. And from this sprouted a prickly pear cactus, which was a nochli. Aztec writing is complicated. This may have been one of the main reasons why the Aztecs used poetry so much as a means of communication. In fact, they had a poem for every occasion. War poems. Now the army goes off to war. Sacred poems. It's the gods who we're fighting for. Historical poems. We have fought many times before. And love poems. But how I'll miss you, mi amor. Poetry was closely connected to music. In fact, poet and singer were the same word in the Aztec language. Oh, I'm a singer, maybe, but I'm a poet, a baby, a baby, yeah. The Aztecs were also skilled at telling time. They created a calendar that helped them to know the best time to plant seeds or harvest crops. They could even predict major climate changes. The solar calendar of the Aztecs was installed in a round altar in the center of a courtyard in the Sun Temple. They were also good at math. And interestingly, they counted using the number 20. What? That's right. The number 20 was the basis of all their calculations, just like the number 10 is for us. Maybe somebody at school taught them how to count with their toes, too. School was very important in Aztec culture. At the age of 15, Aztecs would go to public schools that the state had created to ensure everyone got an education. There were two types of schools. One was called Telpucali where they were taught about weapons, arts, and trades. The other was called Kalmekak, where young men were trained to fulfill priestly duties. Sacrifices. The Aztecs believed that one day the world would end violently and that all people would die in a dramatic manner. They had to make constant sacrifices to the gods to postpone this tragic end. According to their beliefs, blood kept the sun alive. 
And so to maintain the order of the world and have good harvests, the priests had to sacrifice many animals and sometimes even people. The priests would offer the hearts of the victims to the gods. And dying in these ceremonies was generally thought to be a great honor. The absolute god of the Aztecs was called Ometecutli. He had several gods under his command who could also be called upon to help in times of need. The most popular one was Quetzalcoatl, the feather serpent, who was thought to be the great benefactor of humanity. But Aztec legend says that Quetzalcoatl did not get along with the god Tezcatlipoca, who demanded many human sacrifices. One day, there was a confrontation between the two gods, and Quetzalcoatl was expelled from the sacred city of Tula. He disappeared over the horizon in a ship full of serpents. And it was said that one day, Quetzalcoatl would return from exile and impose a new order that would end the bloody sacrifices. So the Aztecs believed that the only way to appease the gods was with the blood of sacrifices, until Quetzalcoatl returned. The Flower Wars. Around 1450, the Aztecs were plagued by numerous droughts and famines. The Aztec leader, Moctezuma, was very concerned and consulted the priests for a solution. The priests said that the gods were also feeling hungry and had decided to share their misfortune with mortals. There was only one solution to this problem. They needed human hearts to feed the gods and appease their hunger. This was how the flower wars began. Ceremonial battles in which the best warriors were pitted against each other until one of them was defeated. As a victory reward, the winner would receive the prize of death. But these warriors were honored to have such glorious deaths. Glorious because the warriors' hearts would be used to feed the gods, ending their hunger and hopefully the hunger of the people as well. The end of the Aztecs. When I perform, I don't limit myself or my makeup because it's easy to remove even heavy makeup like a pro. With Nivea Micellar Expert for 0% greasy residue and clean, feel-good skin that breathes from Nivea. Whether you need dinner for two, or a room with a view, fresh hay all day, or a ball to play, bribes to roll over, yes. or an overdue makeover, get all your pet essentials right when you need them with curbside pickup at PetSmart. Just order online, drive up, check in, and pick up without contact. When the Spanish conquistador, Hernán Cortés, arrived in the Valley of Mexico in 1519, the Aztec king, Moctezuma II, thought that this strange man, dressed in such odd clothing and riding these strange animals called horses, must have been the god Quetzalcoatl, returned from his forced exile to fulfill the prophecy. The Spaniards were welcomed as gods, instead of powerful enemies. But Cortes wasn't called a conquistador for nothing. Cortes's aim all along was to conquer the new world. And he did it with the help of many native warriors who were enemies of the Aztecs and who were recruited by Cortes during his journey towards the capital. A year after his arrival, Cortes had defeated the entire Aztec nation. The capital was destroyed and all their land and wealth belonged to the Spanish crown. The Aztec Empire was destroyed, but is still remembered to this day. The people of Mexico continue to celebrate the rich heritage of their proud and fierce Aztec ancestors, and they still feel the pride of the Aztec people resonating within them. Let's dig a little deeper with our time compass and find out what else was going on around the world at that time. What was happening in Europe while Hernán Cortés was conquering the powerful Aztec Empire? The Turks, who had already conquered the capital of the Byzantine Empire, 
Constantinople, set off to the Balkans with the aim of expanding their control over European territory. They were led by Suleiman, who was the great-grandson of the great Sultan Mehmed II, the conqueror of Constantinople. Suleiman conquered Belgrade in the year 1521 and the island of Rhodes in the following year. He then traveled to Austria and laid siege to the city of Vienna. But he never succeeded in capturing that city. Regardless, Suleiman was such a good king that he was known as the Magnificent. And the Ottoman Empire reached its greatest power under him, eventually growing to almost 40 million subjects. Oh, so the Turks were unbeatable. It seemed so, until the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V managed to stop them. Charles gathered together an army of warriors from all across Europe. He rescued Vienna from the siege and captured the city of Tunis in North Africa in the summer of 1535. His counterattacks helped stop the Turkish expansion on the European continent. <laughs> 